Okay, so I'm back. And yes, part six of this uh, chapter here, we still have some stuff to go here. In this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about glass using the architectural shader. Okay, so let's come in here, zoom in a bit. There's a couple of objects here, actually about three objects that are going to be using a uh, refractive glass type shader. Okay, this vase over here, this wine glass as you can see, and if we uh, zoom in on the wine glass, we actually have uh, the liquid inside the wine, or the wine itself, modeled in our scene. Okay, what I'm going to do for the moment, and just follow along with me here, let's select the uh, wine glass, shift select the liquid inside, okay, and let's go to the, uh, to the show options over here inside the viewport, go to isolate select, and click on view selected. The reason I did that is because I want to temporarily hide everything in the scene so I can just focus on the uh, wine glass and the wine itself. Okay, What we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to work with um, basically a shader here, the architectural shader. And like I said before, the architectural shader is fantastic because you can imitate things like glass, wood. Um, okay, we're going to edit that out of the video and uh, say that again. Three, two, one. As I mentioned before, the architectural shader is fantastic because you can imitate anything from plastics and metals to glass and even liquids and, and wooden floors, all kinds of stuff. And we've been seeing that here uh, in this chapter, in the previous videos. Now we're going to focus on glass. Now, you may be thinking, well, it's just glass. Let's just go ahead and apply the shader and add some transparency and bada boom, we're done. Well, it doesn't work that simple, okay? When working with glass in, uh, in CGI, if you're going for photorealism, which is the case here, you have to know a few key concepts and principles before you can do it. Now, I've noticed, um, I've actually never seen a proper training tutorial in video form or in any other form anywhere that properly explains how to set up glass the correct way, the physically correct way, and uh, with mental ray or anywhere for that matter. And that's actually a pretty, pretty frightening thing, okay? But I'm going to go ahead and show you how to set up glass the correct way, all right? So here we go. Now here I have my wine glass and of course I have my liquid inside or what's supposed to be the liquid. If I go to wireframe view, I can see that there's a liquid inside the uh, wine glass and here's the wine glass on the outside. Okay. Now normally what you would do is, and let me take this liquid here and I'm just going to temporarily move it out of the glass like so and you can see what the liquid looks like. It's just basically a 3D model of what the liquid uh, would be like and taking the shape of the inside of the glass here. Now. This is what normally people do when they try to do this kind of a setup in 3D, whether it's Maya or any other 3D application. They, uh, they model the liquid, like I have here, and they also model the wine glass. Now, this is the biggest mistake that uh, people end up doing, and a big mistake that I've seen in other training material from other guys out there, is that the inside here of the glass will usually have the inside. So, for example, you can see here that the glass... Here's the outside surface, kind of curves here, and then you can see the inside surface. The big mistake that people usually make is that they model the rest of the inside here. That's actually incorrect to do when you're working with mental ray and you're trying to create the, the realistic physical way of how this stuff should be rendered out. Okay, So it sounds kind of confusing at first, so you're probably wondering what in the world are you talking about. Well, you have to think about this process. A different way you can't think of it the way that it works in the real world although at the same time you do let me explain what I'm talking about in the real world a, uh, a wine glass like this has an inside part here where the wine sits if not the wine would fall through a hole or a crack or something right okay unfortunately you can't model that way in uh, in 3d if we were to do that we're gonna get an incorrect result the, the light is not going to refract properly through the different mediums. And what I mean by a medium is uh, one of these objects or surfaces that light has to go through. Okay. So let me explain this a little bit better so that it makes more sense. I'm going to hit Control Z to undo a couple of times here just to put the liquid back inside the wine glass there. Okay. And let me go to wireframe mode. This wireframe is pretty dense, but uh, I think you can make out what's going on here. Okay. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to try to explain this a simpler way, all right? There's light inside of our scene, correct? And that light is going to go ahead and go through this wine glass. So let's, here comes the light ray, and it's going to hit the outside surface 
of the actual glass of the wine here, okay? In real life, the way that it works is that the light goes through the outside surface here, goes through the glass. The glass actually has a thickness to it, so the light gets uh, slowed down. The light gets bent and twisted, depending on the index of refraction of the glass material. Then the light finally gets through the inside surface of the glass. So it's already passed through two surfaces. Then it has to go through the liquid. So it goes through a third surface, and the light actually goes through this dense liquid, okay? And that actually slows down the light. This is the way that light works in the real world, by the way. The light actually slows down, slower than the actual speed of light, the light particles themselves, okay? And they get bent and twisted in all kinds of different ways. The light finally makes it and exits the liquid over here on this side, okay? But then it has to enter the glass. So it enters a third surface of glass over here, and it has to go through a certain thickness of glass. And when it finally makes it out the other side, it has to go through one final surface of glass, which is the other outside part. So it's gone through four surfaces of glass. So let's count. The light ray has to go through surface number one, which is the outside of the glass. Then it has to go through surface number two, which is the inside of the glass. Then it has to go through surface number three, which is the this side of the liquid. Then it goes through the liquid, comes out through the through the back side of the liquid, which is surface number four. Then it has to go into the glass again, to the inside surface of the glass on this side. That's number five. And then it has to exit the glass on the outside over here. That's number six. So basically, the light has to uh, go through a refraction process of six surfaces. Okay? Let's call these surfaces an interface. All right? That's actually a proper way of calling it. Let's call it an interface. Okay? So that's the way that it works in the real world because the wine glass, of course, has an inside part to it. It's not just an empty black hole where the water goes through and disappears into another universe or anything. Unfortunately, in 3D, we can't do that. What, you, what people usually do in 3D is that they'll try to model the glass in the wine exactly the way that it is in the real world, in real life. So they'll model the glass with an inside part, and then they'll model the liquid and put that inside of the glass. Now, two, one of two things will happen. If you model it so the inside surface of the glass and this uh, liquid are in the exact same point in space, you're going to end up with some uh, shading problems with your normals because, as you know, in 3D, when you try to render out two polygons that are in the same exact spot, you get that sort of flickering effect, and that happens pretty much in any 3D program, and that, of course, is not what you want. So when artists work in 3D and they do that, they end up running into that flickering problem, and then they figure, okay, to solve the flickering problem, what I'll do is I'll just take the uh, the liquid material and scale it down just a little bit so there's a little bit of space between the surface of the glass and the surface of the liquid. That leaves a pocket of air, an imaginary pocket of air, in between the two surfaces. That creates a problem. The reason that's a problem is because your interface is totally wrong. Now you have glass on the outside, glass on the inside, then you have clear air, then you have the liquid. That is going to totally throw off the way that mental ray calculates the refractions and the light rays coming in through this, uh, through this interface, through this medium. So it's a wrong interface to use. You should not use glass, glass, air, and liquid. That's the problem. We have to get the air in the middle out. So how in the world do we do that? Well, we have to make sure that there's no air pocket but then you run into that problem where, okay, if I have the polygons of the liquid and the polygons of the glass in the same exact spot in 3D space, I'm going to end up with the flickering problem. Well, the, the way we solve that is actually a lot simpler than you may think. Let me move the liquid outside the glass again. And if we look carefully at the wine glass, you're going to notice something here. If I come in pretty close. Okay, right here you can kind of see it. Okay. Here's the outside surface of the wine glass, and here's the inside. Do you notice something? The inside only comes to about right here. If I go to edge mode, and I actually have soft select turned on. Let me turn that off. I'll double click over here in this icon for the select tool. That'll open up the select tools uh, options here. Let me turn soft select off up here. If you don't have it on, fine. I did, so I'll just turn it off. Okay, there we go. So here's these orange highlighted edges. I just highlighted them by double-clicking on one of them, and that whole border gets uh, highlighted there. 
Okay, so that's where my surface ends. In real life, that wouldn't work out because you basically have a broken uh, wine glass. In 3D, this is what we need to do to get the correct uh, behavior of, uh, of when working with these photorealistic materials and things like the architectural shader and trying to get the correct uh, refractions here. So it's very important. You have to have this modeled exactly how I'm showing you here. So basically the way that this is going to work is the interface is going to work like this. It's going to be glass, then liquid, and then it's going to keep going. So it's not glass, then glass, and then liquid. It's just glass, and then it goes straight to the liquid. That's the way it's supposed to be modeled. If you don't do that, you're going to end up with the wrong type of refraction, and the render is going to come out wrong. Now to the naked eye, it won't look like a problem, but if you're going for photorealism, you know, you have to follow the uh, the physical laws of how light and refractions and light particles behave in real life. So this is how you do it. Even though at first glance you probably your your brain thinks no, this isn't right because a real wine glass doesn't have a hole or it's not empty on the inside. Well, this is just the way that you have to do it in 3D. That's the way it is. So if you want it to render out correctly, this is what you need to do, and this is the correct way of doing glass. Okay and uh, doing liquids inside of a glass. If there was no liquid inside the glass, then you definitely want to make sure that the glass has an inside part to it. But whenever you have a liquid inside of a glass like this, you always want to make sure that your interface, um, your interfaces are set up correctly. In this case, you have to eliminate the inside walls of the glass where the liquid is, and just leave the liquid there, okay? I know it sounds kind of funny, but trust me on that one. That's the correct way of uh, of doing glass and uh, liquids inside a glass with mental ray. Okay, so here's the liquid again, and let me just go ahead and undo a few times just to put that liquid back inside the glass. Okay, there we go. So now let's actually start applying these shaders. But before I do, I'm going to go back to the show menu, go to isolate select, and uncheck view selected. And everything is uh, brought back to the way it was before. Okay, so let's take the glass here. Right click. Let's go to assign new material and let's give it an MIA material X. There we go. And we're going to rename this material. Let's call this material wine glass mat. Okay. Now uh, for the color, this is going to be pretty interesting here. I'm going to have a lot of explaining to do. Actually, let me just copy this name over. I almost forgot to do that. Okay, let's go back to the material over here. Okay, now we've got our glass material here. Let's actually go and give it some transparency first of all. Uh, under refraction here, we're going to take this index of refraction and we're going to give it an index of refraction of 1.5. That's just an index of refraction that I found in a Google search when I was looking for different types of glass materials and things. So it's always a good idea to do that. If you're trying to do a photorealistic render of a specific type of object or material, whether it's glass or you're doing a diamond or ruby or something like that, you want to make sure that you look up the correct index of refraction to use so you can place it here with this shader, okay? Or else uh, it'll never look exactly correct. And let me also go up here and give it some reflectivity. I'll give it full reflectivity since it's a piece of glass, okay? And I'm going to go to the advanced reflection parameters. Now, by default, you have these two parameters. It says no highlights for visible area lights, which we'll keep on. And then we have this skip reflection on inside. What that basically does is if mental ray detects that reflection is too weak and it doesn't, it shouldn't need to be calculated, this option when it's on will tell mental ray, look, don't calculate those little inside reflections that are really small and almost unnoticeable. But I'm going to go ahead and do it. Let me show you how this uh, how this looks. Let me open up the render view here. Take a snapshot. And let's do a render region of this. Just see how this is looking so far. Okay, that's how it looks. Now, I don't have any uh, transparency here. If I go down to refraction, I have to turn on transparency. Let's up the transparency all the way to 1. Let's render that out again. Okay, and it still doesn't look transparent. We're still not getting any transparency there, even though I turned it on. So what's going on? Well, the shader's not broken. Let's go to the render settings. Let's go up here to where these render buttons are in the, uh, in the main toolbar up here. And let's go ahead and click on render settings. Bring that over. Okay, 
Let's go to quality. We have to change some uh, mental rate options here. Okay. Now you'll see down here there's a section for ray tracing. Go ahead and expand that. What we need to do is add ray tracing here. Right now by default this is set to some preview settings. So we're set to reflections of 1, refractions of 1, and a max trace depth of 2. That is not going to work. What we need to do is increase that. So let's go ahead and let's increase the reflections to 6, refractions to 6, and the max trace depth to 12. Let's also increase the shadows here to about 4 just to make sure that the shadows render out correctly. You have to make sure that you give enough ray tracing, uh, enough threshold for the ray tracing to work or else it won't. So now we'll render out again. And basically what we just did was we told Mentor Ray, look, you can go ahead and, and ray trace through more surfaces. So before, ray tracing would only work for up to one bounce, which wasn't very good at all. Now we're doing it 6-6 six, six, and a maximum of 12, which gives it an upper bound threshold to have to, uh, to have to stick to. So this is what we have here. This is what it looks like. Let me save out that render. Let's close the render settings. We don't need them for the moment. And again, let me turn off that auto load selected attributes in the attribute editor window. Keeps happening every time I turn my on and off. Really annoying. Let me go back to the wine glass material here. And um, I'll turn skip reflections on inside off. I'll do another render region. And we're going to compare the two so you can see what the difference is. There we go. So here's the before with the uh, with reflections on the inside skipped. And here's the after with the refractions on the inside not skipped. So you can see this one looks a little bit brighter, but I like the reflections on this, on this one right here. So I'm going to keep this skip reflection on inside parameter turned off because I do want it to calculate those inside reflections. And although it does add about one second to the render time, overall, it doesn't really uh, slow my render time down too much. So it's an optimization parameter, but in this case, um, I'd rather have the reflections instead of saving that one second of render time. Now let's go down here to the BRDF and I'm going to turn that uh, turn on Fresnel reflections. So let's go up here. I'm going to go to the color here and let's take this color and let's knock down the value. Make sure you're in HSV mode. Let's knock down the value to about uh, maybe 0.2. Or that might be a little bit too bright. Let's go to about 0.1. Okay, that'll work out. Let's hit accept. Let's do another render region here and see what we have. Okay, it's looking pretty good. As you can see, it's starting to look like a pretty realistic uh, looking glass here. Okay, um, we have the nice refractions. Looks pretty nice. There is some artifact, and that's happening, of course, because our uh, the lights in our scene are area lights, and they're set to very low sampling settings for preview reasons, so we can render out faster. So don't worry about that. We'll fix that later. And what we're going to do is... For ambient occlusion, we're not going to use any ambient occlusion for this shader. I don't want to. Uh, simply, it's just going to slow rendering time down, and it's not going to make uh, much of a difference, if any. Okay. So, my reflectivity looks pretty good. My diffuse color and stuff like that looks pretty good. But there is another parameter. If we go down here to the refraction parameters, let me collapse all this other stuff. And I'm just going to leave refraction here so we can focus on that. Okay, so we have our main refraction parameters, which we set the index of refraction to 1.5. We increase the transparency all the way so we can see through the glass. And then there's these advanced refraction parameters down here. We're going to talk about this a lot more because these parameters are very important for doing a realistic glass and imitating the way that, that light interacts with glass materials in the real world. We can do that using these parameters. But for the moment, I'm going to opt to skip that, and we'll actually do that in the next video. Since this video has been running up for a pretty good amount of time, I'm going to do that in the next video. We'll set up the material for the wine liquid inside here and uh, wrap up this glass stuff, but we'll do that in the next video.